Hello friends, today we are going to discuss about National Medical Commission Act 2019. I am Dr. Suresh Badadmat, Professor of Psychiatry, working at National Institute of Mental Health and Neurosciences, Bangalore. In this video, I will be discussing about National Medical Commission Act of 2019. National Medical Commission Act was passed on 8th of August 2019. Let's look into the chapterization of this legislation. The National Medical Commission Act 2019 has 61 sections and 8 chapters. Chapter 1 is preliminary which discusses about the preamble and the definition. Chapter 2 discusses about National Medical Commission that is from section 3 to section 12. Chapter 3 discusses about Medical Advisory Council. This is advising body for National Medical Commission from chapter 11 to 13. Chapter 4 discusses about national examination that is single entry and exit exams from section 14 to 15. Chapter 5 discusses about the four important autonomous boards that is from section 16 to 34. Chapter 6 talks about recognition of medical qualifications from section 35 to 40. Chapter 7 is regarding the grants, audit and accounts. And finally the miscellaneous from section 45 to 61. If you look at the organogram of National Medical Council Act, the top it is the National Medical Commission headed by the chairperson and various members. In shortly I will be discussing about that. And there is a Medical Advisory Council for NMC. And there are four important boards. They are autonomous boards. And I will be making a separate video to discuss the power and function of this autonomous board separately. Now first, let's discuss about the preliminary. Here, the chapter 1 talks about preamble and definition. If you look at the preamble of this legislation, it clearly says, it discusses about the medical education system how to improve the access to quality and affordable medical education. Second was ensure the availability of adequate and high quality medical professions across the country. It also discusses about to promote equitable and universal health coverage in the keeping the concept of community health perspective and make services of medical professions accessible to all citizens across the country. It also focuses on promotion of national health goals, encourages medical professionals to adopt latest medical research and also to contribute to the research. It also an objective of periodic and transparent assessment of these medical institutions, so-called medical colleges, facilitate the maintenance of medical register for India. And also it enforces high ethical standards during the provision of medical services by the doctors. It also engages to be flexible to adapt to the changing needs such as COVID and, are, and also various public health policies. It also focuses on effective grievance redressal mechanism in this legislation. Considering the section 2, it talks about the definition. You need to understand, comparing to Medical Council of India, in National Medical Commission, there has been a difference with regard to license for medical practice and registration for medical practice. License means license to practice medicine in any part of India from the respective state. That means you need to take license from the state medical council. Then what is this? Registration. As soon as a person passes the exit exam, he will be able to enter into the permanently national medical register. That means he will have a unique ID of registration of national, under National Medical Commission. Once he gets the permanent registration, he can apply to the state medical council to practice, license to practice medicine. That means as a doctor, 
now i have to apply for single registration under the national medical commission and this national medical commission will me will give me a unique id for national registration and now once i get the registration number from that number i need to apply to various states where i am going to practice suppose i am going to practice in karnataka i need to apply for state medical council to license to practice and also if i want to practice in state of tamil nadu kerala and also if i want to practice in uttarakhand then i need to take license from these various four states now the question is from various doctors why we need to have license and also registration please understand under the constitution of india we need to keep the federal structure intact that means the state also need to be given complete freedom what kind of doctors are going to practice in their state hence although there may be a single unique id for registration under the national medical commission under the central government the state will decide whether to give state medical license to practice in their state or not and invariably by default they have to give but many a time the state medical council legislation can place some of the reservation and may not allow to practice that means license to practice is different from national registration of unique id further the state medical council means the medical council constituted under any law for the time being in force in any state or in union that means federal structure has been given due importance under the national medical commission that means a reasonable degree of independence has been given to the state there is something called a state register that means once a person gets into license under the national registration under the national medical commission there is also a state register to provide license to practice in that state now let's directly go into the chapter 2 that is national medical commission that is from section 3 to section 10 the uh, here in national medical commission as i mentioned section 3 to section 12 if you look at the national medical commission it's actually is formed by the central government it has 33 members including the chairperson the commission that is national medical commission consists of following persons appointed by the central government there will be a chairperson who has done mbbs and md or ms with 20 years of experience and he needs to be including of 10 years a leader in that field that means he needs to be in the administrative capacity as hod maybe the head of an institution that means he need to have at least 20 years of experience further it also talks about 10 ex officio members, 22 part time members. Who are these 10 ex officio members? Four presidents of this autonomous boards. They are UG board, PG board, EMRB board, and MARB. One person as an ex officio from Director General of Health Services, one person Director General of ICMR, and one Director of any All India Institute of Medical Science. Two directors either from Pijmer, Jipmer, Tata Memorial, Nigrims or AIH and PH. One person from central government representation not below the rank of additional secretary. There are 22 part-time members. Three members appointed from following areas such as management, law, medical ethics, health research, consumer or patient rights advocacy, science and technology and economics. 10 members to be appointed on rotational basis among us the nominees of the state medical or union medical council for a term of two years only. Nine members to be appointed from among the nominees of state and union territories of the medical advisory council for two years. And there shall be under section 5 a search committee for appointment of these members for national medical commission. Section 6 talks about terms of office and condition of services of chairperson and members of this NMC. Here, section 6, subsection 1 talks about chairperson and part-time members are not eligible for extension or reappointment. That means, NMC members cannot be reappointed. They are very clear. Section 6, subsection 6 talks about 
the chairperson and every member of the commission shall make declaration of their assets when they join the NMC and also when they exit or they finish their tenure, they need to declare their asset. That means once you join NMC, if you are corrupt and if you are making money, it will be caught. That means here the NMC talks about high transparency. Section 6, subsection 7 talks about the chairperson or a member ceasing to hold office as such shall not accept for a period of two years any employment in any capacity in any of the private medical institution whose matter has been dealt with such person or member directly or indirectly. What does it mean? Suppose you are working as in, in National Medical Commission, either maybe a chairperson or else the president of any boards or member of any of the NMC or even the autonomous board. You are not eligible to get an appointment or as an employee of any of the private institution after ending your tenure under NMC for a period of two years, whatever may be the capacity. And suppose if you have dealt with their case with that specific institution, you are barred from going into that job. My dear friends, that means here the ethics and integrity of the NMC members should be very high. That has been clearly made out and has been spelt out in this legislation. Section 7 talks about removal of chairperson and removal of the members of the commission. Section 8 talks about appointment of secretary and also experts, professionals, officers and other employees of the commission. Section 8 is very important. Please understand, there are at least more than 600 medical colleges. That means there are number also increasing because the government of India has decided to open one medical college in every district that we have at least 780 and odd districts. That means we need to have so many medical colleges. These medical colleges, licensing of UG and every PG needs to be licensed. They need to be monitored. They need to be evaluated for their education, for their curriculum and how these number of doctors are there, number of teaching faculty is there, what are the facilities they are providing. These need to be assessed on regularly, every year for the new institution, periodically for the old institutions. Hence, we require a huge number of people to do this. That means we require an army to monitor this because medical education is in high demand at this point of time. Whenever there is a high demand and the supply is very less, corruption is by default. Once there is a corruption, the access to medical education, access to health care becomes a dream and poor people will suffer. With regard to appointment of experts, Section 8, Subsection 7 talks about the Commission may engage any number of experts who have special knowledge and experience in such field including medical education, public health, management, health economics, quality assurance, patient advocacy, health research, science, technology, administration, finance, accounts and law as it deems necessary to assist the commission in executing their responsibility and also to meet their goals as per the NMC. Section 9 talks about meeting and decision. NMC will set at least once in four months and one half of the, that is 50% of the total number of members along with the chairperson shall form the quorum or constitute the quorum to decide. Decision will be based upon voting. A person who is aggrieved by any decision of the NMC can prefer to appeal to the central government within 30 days. Let's understand section 10. That is power and functions of this National Medical Commission. National Medical Commission is the highest body with regard to medical education, medical education institutions, the doctors, the teachers in these institutions, how they are governed, how they are licensed and registered. Section 10 gives powers and functions for this NMC. National Medical Commission has an important function to maintain high quality and high standards in medical education, regulating these medical institutions, medical research and medical professionals, develop a roadmap for the meeting the requirements of human resources of health and health infrastructure in India, 
frame guidelines and lay down policies by making necessary regulations for the proper functioning of the commission the autonomous board and the state medical commission coordinating with the autonomous board is the responsibility of the national medical commission take such measure as may be necessary to ensure compliance with the state medical council of the guidelines framed and regulation made under the act so for the effective implementation of national medical commission act and nmc will act as a appellate jurisdiction with respect to the decision of the autonomous board and they also lay down policies and codes to ensure the observance of professional ethics in the medical profession and to promote ethical conduct during the provision of care by the medical professions and it also envisions to frame guidelines for determination of fees and all other charges in respect to 50% of the seats which are there in private medical institution that means private medical institution cannot go on charging huge 50% of the seats are reserved for government that means poor people or poor students exercise such any power and perform such function as may be prescribed by the central government and also the section 10 subsection 2 talks about all orders and decisions of the commission shall be authenticated by the signature of the secretary that means the commission as a body will take decision and that needs to be authenticated by the secretary the commission may delegate such power of administration and finance matter as it deem fit to the secretary and also to the autonomous board the commission may constitute subcommittees and delegate such power to such subcommittee as may be necessary to enable them to accomplish the specific task and also the goals chapter 3 is an important which talks about mac that is medical advisory council from section 11 to 13 this is mac my dear friend section 11 to 13 here the chairperson of the national medical council will be the chairperson for medical advisory council also every member of the commission will be the ex officio one member to represent such each state and ut who is a vice chancellor of the health university in that state and to be nominated by the state government or home affairs for the union territory one member to represent each state union territory from among the elected members of the state medical council to be nominated by the state medical council the chairman of the ugc the director of the national assessment and accreditation council four members to be nominated by the central government from amongst the person holding the post of directors in iit iim and ias the primary functions of the medical advisory council is to advise national medical commission and this medical advisory council is the primary platform through which the state medical council union territories and the state will put forth their views and concerns before the national medical commission and help in shaping the overall agenda policy and actions relating to medical education and training across the country that means in federal structure the functioning of medical advisory council council is very essential so that nmc is properly guided by this medical advisory council the council shall advise the commission on minimum standards in all matters relating to medical education training research enhancing the equitable access to medical education for all citizens 50% of them in the medical advisory council will form the quorum and the decision will be by the majority by vote and my dear friends the nmc as a 2019 section 61 and 8 chapter also has autonomous boards if you look at the topmost body is national medical commission which has 33 members including the chairperson this national medical commission act body is been advised by a, another council called as medical advisory council in simple word it is also called as mac and finally under the national medical commission there are four autonomous boards are formed which are ug board pg board medical assessment and rating board and finally ethics and medical registration board so these are the important boards which are formed under the national medical commission if you look at the chapterization the autonomous board comes under the chapter 5 and from section 16 to 34 discusses about the autonomous boards let's look into the various autonomous boards those are as i mentioned undergraduate medical education board postgraduate medical education board medical assessment and rating board and finally 
Ethics and Medical Registration Board. These are the four boards which are formed under the National Medical Commission. Let's look into this autonomous board. Each board is consists of one president, two full-time members and two part-time members. All of them, that is president and full-time members, shall be having 15 years of experience from the medical background, that is they will have MBBS and MD. And at least 7 years, in the 15 years, should be the leader in their field. That means 4 presidents, 2 full-time members of all the boards, the third member of UG and PG board should have 15 years of experience. But however, the third member of MARB and the third member of Ethics and Medical Registration Board are from the different field. From the, for the MARB board, they may be from the management, quality assurance, law or science and technology field. For Ethics and Medical Registration Board, they may be from quality assurance, public health, law or advocacy. And finally, the fourth member for all the boards are elected from the State Medical Commission, my dear friends. If you look at the section 19, the president and the members, apart from the part-time members, that means full-time members, autonomous board shall hold the office for a period of four years or for the period of four or the age of 70 years. Whichever is the first, that will be considered. None of the full-time members or the president will be given extension or reappointment. That means they will serve only once in their lifetime. Part-time members of each of this autonomous board will hold the office only for a period of two years. Each autonomous board except ethics and medical registration board shall be consisted of advisory committee of experts to advise these three boards. However, for the Ethics and Medical Registration Board, there will be an expert ethics committee. That means there is a committee which will assist the functioning. Whereas for the other three boards, it will be advisory committees. That means they will advise only. Whereas for EMRB board, the ethics committee can be given the power to function as it required. Section 21 talks about the experts professionals, officers and other employees appointed under the NMC Act will be available for all the boards. That means, whoever are the experts which are there either under the four boards can be called for assisting the functioning of NMC under any of this board. Section 22 talks about board shall meet at least once a month. All decisions of the boards will be taken by voting. Any person who are aggrieved by the decision of the boards can appeal National Medical Commission within 60 days, my dear friends. So, this is how the chairperson of the National Medical Commission, Medical Advisory Council and four boards. Now, let's discuss about the Undergraduate Medical Education Board. This is, starts from Section 24. The UG Medical Education Board have been given various powers and function. They will perform the following function. They will standardize the UG medical education. They will be giving this education based upon the competency-based dynamic UG curriculum. That means by standardization through competency-based dynamic UG curriculum. Curriculum for addressing the needs of the primary health services, community medicine, and family medicine. That means the UG will be focusing more on the public health issues rather than the specialization. UG board also frame guidelines for setting up of UG medical institution that is colleges. Minimum requirements and standards for conducting courses and examination for undergraduates will be dictated by the undergraduate medical education board. Standards and norms for infrastructure faculty and quality of education in UG Medical Institution will be put forwarded by UG Medical Education Board, my dear friend. They also will facilitate development and training of faculty of the members teaching in UG institutions. 
they will also facilitate research and international student and faculty exchange program for UG so that the international standards can also be brought into India. Specify the norms of compulsory and annual disclosures with regard to the various institutions and the faculty will be discussed. Grant and recognition of these medical education and qualification at the undergraduate level will be done by UG Medical Educational Board, my dear friends. So now, let's move into PG Medical Education Board. That is PG Board. The PG Board shall perform the following function. Standards of PG Education and Super Speciality will be set by PG Board. Competency based dynamic PG curriculum and super speciality will be set by PGME board. Frame the guidelines for setting up of medical institution for imparting PG and super speciality courses. Considering the needs of the country will be an important baseline criteria. Minimum requirements and standards for conducting the course and examination for PG and super speciality will be set by PG board. Standards, norms for infrastructure, faculty and quality of education in PG board or PG institution will be set by this PG board. Facilitate development and training of faculty members teaching post-graduation. Facilitate research and international student and faculty exchange and program for PGs. PG uh, teachers will be done here. They will also specify the norms for compulsory annual disclosure, grant recognition of a to a medical qualification at the PG and super speciality will be done here. And they also promote, facilitate PG courses in family medicine. Again, the PG board has been given an important uh, agenda of starting family medicines, my dear friends. That means either they can start a course or else in all the postgraduates, family medicine syllabus or the curriculum need to be brought in here. Either way, the PG board will dictate this. Now let's move to the Medical Assessment and Rating Board, my dear friends. The Medical Assessment and Rating Boards have been given following responsibilities. That is, to determine the procedure for assessing and rating the medical institution for the compliance with the standard laid down by the UG and PG board. That means, MAR will be monitoring of these institutions for their compliance. The, the MARB also will grant the permission for establishment of new medical institution for UG and PG and also the courses and how to increase the number of seats in this UG PG will be decided by the MARB. The MARB also will be carrying out inspection of these medical institution for assessing and rating such institution. It can do by itself or else it can authorize the third agencies, third party agencies to do this inspection for them. The institutions undergoing the assessment shall provide complete access for the inspection of this institution. If they stop the MARB members who are doing the inspections or the third party who is assessing on behalf of MARB will be allowed to enter into the premises of this institution and give access completely to this institution. If they don't do that, they may lose their license or they may not get the license or the permission to start the new course or the institution. They will assess and rate all the medical institution either by themselves or an independent agency. A bore rating shall be made available online or in a public domain so that the students who are joining these UG and PG courses know what is the rating of this medical college. MARB also will issue warning, imposition of monetary penalty, reducing the intake or stoppage of admission, recommending the commission to withdrawal of the recognition against the medical institution for failure to maintain the minimum essential standards put forward by UG or the PG board. And finally, we will discuss about Ethics and Medical Registration Board, my dear friends. The Ethics and Medical Registration Board are dictated under the section 27. The Ethics and Medical Registration Board shall perform following function. They will maintain the national register for all licensed medical practitioner. This will be the one-time registration for the life. They will be unique IDs. The EMRB will also regulate professional conduct and promote medical ethics. EMRB shall ensure compliance 
of the code of conduct of the professionals ethical conduct through the state medical commission that means emrb at the central level will play a role at the same time emrb also will discuss with the state medical council and how to implement the regulations of emrb through state medical commission or the council so that the professionals are regulated with regard to ethical and moral standards further the mrb also will look into have the continuous interaction with the state medical council to effectively promote and regulate the conduct of medical practitioner and professional further mrb will be the appellate jurisdiction with respect to action taken by state medical council the doctor who is aggrieved by the state medical council can appeal only to the mrb now let's look into the establishing medical institutions that is starting the new medical colleges permission for establishing the medical colleges will be done only through the medical assessment and rating board no person shall start the medical colleges without the permission of mar my dear friend to establish one need to submit a scheme or a project as per the regulations formed by the mar my dear friends that means no person in india can start a medical college without the permission of medical assessment and rating board to take permission they need to submit the project or the scheme the marb that is medical assessment medical assessment and rating board shall consider the scheme or the project either they may approve or disapprove the scheme within the 6 months of submission if they disapprove an opportunity shall be given to rectify the defect that means marb will give an important advice that telling that these are the rectification you have to do and one opportunity of hearing will be given if the marb approves that means they can start the new medical college if no decision is taken by the marb or it is disapproved by the marb telling that we will not allow the medical college that person can apply to national medical commission directly now nmc shall decide the case within 45 days of appeal if the nms nmc that is national medical commission disapproves or fails to give decision now the person can approach the central government my dear friend the marb may conduct evaluation and assessment of any medical institution at any time my dear friend that means sumoto power also has been given to marb now let's look into the criteria for approving or disapproving to start a new medical college or to increase the number of ug seats or pg seats first and the foremost is adequate financial resources whether there are adequate academic faculties the teachers and other necessary facilities whether it is available or not as per the regulations put forward by the pg board or the ug board whether there have adequate hospital facilities so that the practical training can be given in these hospitals such other factors which can be put forward by the ug board or pg board or maybe marb itself can also play a role and in the area of need the criteria can be relaxed that means imagine in a remote area of northeastern place or maybe in some part of north india where there are no medical colleges in the rural area in the tribal area or in the hilly region where there is a acute need of hospitals and that is the area of need where somebody proposes to start a medical college that will be encouraged by the marb and some relaxation will be given with regard to regulation and they will be allowed and encouraged to start medical colleges in this place now let's discuss about the state medical council which is dictated by the section 30 the state government shall establish state medical council if no such council exist they need to pass a legislation within the 3 years of passing an mc that means this legislation was passed in 2019 now all the states should have state medical council where a state council is already there because of the state act like karnataka medical council act is there that will take disciplinary action against the doctors if they do unethical practice or ethical misconduct that means 
the state medical council shall act in accordance with the regulation made by the nmc rather than the smc with regard to ethics and medical registration my dear friends that means smc need to follow the national medical commission's regulations with regard to ethics and medical registration board further the mrb or the smc shall give an opportunity of hearing for the medical practitioner concerned before taking any action including imposition of monetary penalty against such person that means if a doctor has done something wrong either it may be medical negligence medical malpractice or medical misconduct and a complaint is lodged into the state medical council or into the ethics and medical registration board in such a scenario this emrb or state medical council will give an opportunity for the doctor to be heard and then the decision will be made a medical practitioner or a professional who is aggrieved by the state medical council will approach or appeal to the mrb board only the medical professionals are given opportunity under the national medical commission to approach the mrb that needs to be understand and here the patients are not allowed to appeal to the mrb mrb board my dear friend this appears to be absurd but however one need to think the patient has been given an opportunity to approach state medical council once they lose the case they cannot go anywhere else they can go to the consumer court for the compensation but however if the doctor loses the case they can appeal to the mrb my dear friends suppose even if they lose the case in mrb my dear friend the practitioner has been given an opportunity to appeal national medical commission within 60 days now let's understand the chapter 4 which is national examination which are dictated from section 14 to section 15 my dear friends let's look into the national examinations that is national examination for medical education the national medical commission shall conduct the neat exam that is national eligibility come entrance test for undergraduates my dear friend that means without neat exam nobody can join medical college to become a doctor further it also says a common final year undergraduate medical examination considered as next also called as national exit test shall be the granting license to practice medicine as a medical practitioner and for enrollment in the state register or the national register as the case may be within 3 years of passing this national medical commission act that means there will be two exam one is neat another one is next exam this national exit test shall be the basis for admission for pg and super speciality also any person with foreign medical qualification have to pass national exit test my dear friends the central government shall conduct this common counseling for all india seats and designated authority of the state government shall conduct the common counseling for the states at the state level my dear friends let's understand the process of national examination my dear friends first and the foremost to join mbbs course there is neat exam that is national eligibility come entrance test my dear friends and before they enter into the internship that means they need to pass the mbbs to pass mbbs there will be next exam 1 or phase 1 will be conducted once the next exam 1 is passed they will be given a provisional registration to practice internship once they have passed or finished their internship they need to take next exam 2 this next exam 2 will give them the permanent registration and also registration either under the nmc or state medical council this next two exam will be the basis for joining post graduation my dear friends that means national medical commission will conduct three important national exam that is neat 
next exam 1 and next exam 2 my dear friends. Now let's look into the autonomous board, boards which are from section 16 to section 34. They are under the chapter 5 my dear friends. These are the various boards which are formed undergraduate board, postgraduate board, medical assessment and rating board and finally ethics and medical registration board. These are the four boards which are formed under the National Medical Commission Act, my dear friends. Let's look into the National Register which are dictated by Section 31. The Ethics and Medical Registration Board shall maintain a National Register for Registered Medical Practitioner. This register will be maintained both physical and electronic form as described under the regulation. The manner of entry and removal of the name into this register will be dictated by the regulation that is ethics regulation my dear friends. This national register will be a public document and EMRB will make all efforts to make it public and place them in the public domain either in the website of EMRB or NMC my dear friends. Every state medical commission shall maintain and regularly update the state medical register in the specified electronic format and supply a physical copy of the same to the medical registration board. Of course, in the era of digital, you may ask why there should be a physical copy. Of course, at this point of time, we need to have a physical copy, my dear friends. Of course, nowadays we have amazing digital technology like blockchain development, which may help in reducing the physical copy my dear friends but however this legislation says both electronic and physical copy should be maintained by the state medical council emrb shall ensure electronic synchronization of national register and the state register which is maintained by the state medical council that means state medical council which maintains the state register and the national medical commission which maintains the national register they should be synchronizing that means Whatever the changes made in the State Medical Council will be depicted under the National Medical Commission, my dear friend. EMRB shall maintain a separate national register for community health providers, my dear friend. However, one need to understand. There is a national register, but there is a license to practice under Section 33. Under Section 33, right of a person to have a license to practice need to be enrolled either in the national register or in the state register and they need to fulfill certain obligation. Any person who qualifies the next exam that is national exit test shall be granted a license to practice medicine and shall have his name and qualification enrolled either in the national register or in the state register. However, this is separate from the national register or a state register. There is registration that is one time registration which will occur at the National Medical Commission or maybe at the State Medical Commission and there is a license to practice which will be given by the respective states, my dear friends. Foreign medical graduates who are passing their MBBS from the foreign institution need to qualify the next exam, both next exam 1 and 2, my dear friend, to enter their name into National Register and they need to take license from the State Medical Council to practice to practice medicine in their respective states. If a registered person shall be entitled to have such title, diploma or qualification entered into the state register or national register, with those qualification needs to be approved by the NMC, my dear friend. Section 34 talks about bar to practice. No person other than a person who is enrolled in either in the state register or in the national register can practice allopathy, my dear friend he will be allowed to practice medicine and he can hold an office as a physician or a surgeon in any government and he is entitled to sign or authenticate or to give a medical certificate, fitness certificate or any other certificate required by the law so that he can sign it and produce it to the respective authorities, my dear friend. That means NMC gives power to the registered medical practitioner to give certificate my dear friends. The RMP is also entitled to give evidence at any inquest or in any court 
of law as an expert under the section 45 of the Indian Evidence Act. That means NMC gives power to the registered medical practitioner to give evidence. Any person who contravenes any of the provision of this section shall be punished with imprisonment for a term which may extend to one year or with fine which may extend up to 5 lakh rupees my dear friends or maybe both. That means National Medical Commission Act Section 34 bars practicing allopathy by any other person other than a person who is registered under State Medical Commission or National Medical Commission. Chapter 6 discusses especially with Section 35 recognition of medical qualification granted by universities or medical institution of India. That means no colleges or universities will give any degrees which are not approved by NMC. Even if they give, NMC will not recognize such degrees or qualification. Recognition of medical qualification comes under chapter 6 and they are dictated from section 35 to section 40. Recognition of medical qualification granted by universities and medical institution of India has to be approved by respective boards. That is, either it may be UG board, PG board to recognize them. You can start, you cannot start a new course without the permission of NMC, my dear friends. The UG board and PG board shall maintain a list of recognized qualification for the purpose of the act. Any university or medical institution may apply to the respective board for granting recognition of such courses. If they want to start a UG course, they need to apply to UG board. And if you want to apply for a new PG course, you need to apply for PG Medical Education Board. UG and PG board shall examine the application within six months and decide to approve or disapprove that course. If approved, it will be entered into the list of recognized qualification and the date of entry. If rejected, the applicant can choose to appeal to the NMC within 60 days. NMC shall examine and direct the respective boards to approve or uphold the decision. If NMC rejects the application, the applicant can approach the central government within 30 days. Similarly, Section 36 talks about recognition of medical qualification granted by universities or medical institutions outside the India, my dear friends. Any country outside the India, which by the law of their country has been running certain courses, they can approach the National Medical Commission to recognize these new courses or the degrees. These medical qualifications should be approved by that country. Then only they can apply in India through that agencies only. The commission can refuse to accept those qualifications. If they refuse, then they can approach the central government against the NMC's decision, my dear friend. If it is granted, then such qualification from the foreign countries will be approved and they will be available for NMC and such a medical practitioner can practice in India by putting those qualification in front of their name. Section 37 talks about recognition of medical qualification granted by statutory bodies or other body in India. Section 37 is very clear. The medical qualifications granted by any statutory or other bodies which are maintained under the schedule. These schedules which talks about All India Institute of Medical Science Act, PGI qualifications, JIPMAR qualification, NIMANS qualification, DNB or NBA qualification. All these five bodies are under the statute passed by the Parliament of India, my dear friends. Apart from DNB or NBA, that is under the Society Act, my dear friends. Now, the NMC Act is very clear. Any degrees given by these five institutions need to be recognized by NMC. DNB, recognized qualifications given by the NBA, that is National Board Examination, has to be recognized by the NMC for teacher if the hospital has a strength of 500 or more beds and that will be considered as equivalent to MD or MS. In all other cases where if that national 
medical examination or DNB where the bed's strength is less than 500, those students who pass from such institution shall do one year senior residency to be considered as equivalent to MD or MS. This applies only for DNB students, my dear friend. Section 38 talks about withdrawal of recognition granted for these medical qualifications by the NMC or by the boards. After the MARB assessment, that is Medical Assessment and Rating Board, if they have assessed, a report will be submitted to the commission about the university or the medical, univer uh, medical uh, institution not to recognize such courses or postgraduates or UG will be submitted to NMC. NMC invariably will give an opportunity to listen to them or else they may impose penalty against them. If they continue to violate the regulations or else it is a gross violation is there, the commission shall hold a consultation with the respective state government and the authority of the concerned university or medical institution and they will withdraw the permission or license to keep the college. The withdrawal of recognition or granted to medical qualification granted by medical institution outside the India will be by the NMC. NMC will decide about the withdrawal of recognition. Section 40 also talks about NMC may recognize certain qualification granted by medical institution outside India but the graduate needs to pass the next exam my dear friends. But however, there is a one contentious issue that is section 32 that is community health providers. Section 32 of National Medical Commission Act which is opposed by most of the MBBS doctors that is community health provider section. Here the National Medical Commission can grant a limited license to practice medicine at the mid-level community health provider to such person connected with modern scientific medical profession who qualifies such criteria as may be specified by the regulation provided that the number of limited license to be granted shall not be exceed one third of the total number of licensed medical practitioner. That means National Medical Commission gives community health providers. It can be nurse, nurse practitioners or maybe community health workers or maybe even voice doctors after undergoing certain training which may be specified by the regulations can practice limited allopathy. The community health providers who is granted limited license may practice medicine to such an extent in such circumstances for such period as specified by the regulation. The community health providers may prescribe specified medicine independently only in primary or preventive health care. But in case rather than primary and preventive health care, if they want to do, that needs to be supervised by a medical practitioners. And this community health provider has been opposed by Indian Medical Association, various doctors, various medical colleges because this is a backdoor entry to practice allopathy has been the allegation by the doctors against NMC. Now let's look into the miscellaneous sections of the NMC which is dictated from section 45 to section 61. Section 49. Completion of courses of studies in medical institution. If a recognize, recognition granted to a medical institution is lapsed for both either UG or PG for any reasons, either maybe not meeting the standards or the faculties are not there or the health hospital is not there or something has gone wrong. Such med medical institution shall continue to maintain and provide the minimum standards required to be provided under this act till such time as candidate who are admitted in the medical institution complete their education. The year that institute gets degree recognized, from that day onwards they will not do any admission either for UG or PG. Imagine, in 2013, a medical colleges, their recognition is withdrawn. However, there are already students who are undergoing either UG or PG. Those will continue to do their education and they will be given recognition. However, from 2023, that institution will never admit unless they meet the criteria of our UG or PG board and the MARB will give the permission to start the courses. That means 
it is very clear just because in 2023 the college loses recognition does not mean the students who have under who are undergoing graduation or post graduation will not be recognized the state government under section 51 will promote primary health care in rural areas every state government depending upon their health human resources for the purpose of addressing and promoting primary health care in rural areas can take necessary measure to enhance the capacity of healthcare professionals that means either through community health providers or they can start various other courses and nmc may look into the matter and they may provide recognition the chairperson members and office of the commissions and autonomous board will be considered as a public servants my dear friends section 53 gives protection of the action taken in good faith by these public servants further section 54 talks about cognizable offense that means no court shall take the cognizance of any offense punishable under this act except upon complaint in writing mode or made in this by a officer on behalf of national medical commission or mrb board or state medical council under section 54 of this legislation further section 55 talks about powers of the central government to supersede the commission that means if the commission is not functioning properly the central government can dissolve the national medical commission and take over the nmc my dear friend section 56 talks about the central government to make rules power to make rules and section 57 power to make regulation section 61 is a transitory provision that means nothing will stand or nothing will be stopping by the reappeal of the indian medical council act of 1950 56 the educational standards requirements and other provision of the imc act of 1956 the rules regulation made under that shall continue to exist and will be in force until that day when an mc makes new rules regulation guidelines till then although the act may be repealed those regulations and guidelines will continue to be enforceable under the law till the date nmc makes new rules and regulation to conclude my dear friends nmc act of 2019 is a paradigm shift from imc to nmc which is a public pro legislation although health is a state subject nmc has taken a bold step to form a comprehensive legislation This is a high time we need to move the health from the state register or the list to central register at least to the concurrent list my dear friends so that the citizen of india can enjoy a good health and access to good health care although this legislation is new need time to implement the legislation is implemented through nmc and also four autonomous boards and state medical council these are the various bodies or statutory bodies under national medical commission act that is nmc act body and mac that is a medical advisory council and four autonomous board including state medical council which will implement this legislation my dear friends thank you very much for giving your valuable time stay safe